Hello, folks. You're listening to the Onward with Henri podcast. I'm your host, Henri Kompen. And uh, today we got a really special guest. Um, uh, his name is Ryan Burke. He is the writer of a comic book series called Coronary, uh, which features art by uh, Yisun Shin letter and designer uh, Joel Saavedra. And I brought him on the show today to talk about his ongoing Kickstarter right now and to basically just shoot the shit with him because he's a really cool guy and he's a British writer and I'm totally jealous of the fact that he's got that that British accent and, you know, everybody assumes that because he's British, you know, he's he's automatically like, you know, the top, uh, you know, tier <laughs> writer in the comic book industry. Ryan, how you doing this evening? <laughs> uh, not too bad. It's nice. <laughs> Nice of people to assume that about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I like to pay compliments when I can. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, I get that, like, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, tell me, uh, how's everything going, man? Uh, you just finished your 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 third issue of your series. You know, you how do you feel? How does it feel getting that third issue done? It it feels pretty good, to be honest with you. We're, we're still kind of pushing at the moment, but we're making. We're making a lot of good ground, to be honest with you. Like considering when we started on episode one, I, I looking back, I almost feel embarrassed because like you had no idea. <laughs> like it was a miracle that thing got funded in the first place, and now I'm on number three, and I've got a lot more experience under my belt. Like I know how it runs and everything, so I'm a lot more comfortable. I mean, the stress is still there. You always get a little bit of self doubt, but uh, I feel a lot nicer with where we are. Mm. Which is cool. Well, before we go on, I think probably people want to know what your book is about. Can you can you give us the elevator pitch? Tell us what what is coronary about, and you know, tell, dive into the project for us. So basically, the the log line is essentially coronary is what would happen if plastic surgery became free. That's essentially the the gist and the premise of the whole story. And then we, within that, we follow a businessman called Justin, and he, he essentially has everything he ever needs. Like he has all the expensive watches, the fancy lifestyle, all of that, but none of that is making him happy. And then he, he meets this, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, <laughs> revolutionary, who's probably the best best word you'd use to describe it, who, who called Luna Page. She's essentially anti all of that. And it's kind of about the interactions and how they survive the the world in general. You know, I, I've seen the covers for these books, um, and Joel has talked a lot about coronary. Um, and, I mean, this book, just the covers for them are riveting. You know, you sent me the second issue. I've backed you on um, all three of your Kickstarters, um, and I'm I'm impressed, you know. And, and you're doing this all by yourself, too, aren't you? You're, you're, you're self publishing this and self-financing it you're, you're doing everything from yeah. the ground up and pretty much how how has that been so far for you it's it's kind of pretty scary but also pretty liberating at the same time what would you say is liberating like, about it uh liberating and kind of i decide what goes in the book like there is nothing there's no editor or publisher like i can be as risky as i want to be yeah, it's I mine. Hear. Like no one's gonna tell me not to do it. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. It's it, kind of my own judgment call. Have you uh, ha- have you gotten like uh, you know feedback from your readers so far? Like what a, what w- like has that had any effect on like your how you're shaping the story at all? Or are you just kind of like you know what? Fuck what the audience is telling me. I'm going to take this wherever the hell I want. If they all think it's like crashing and burning, then, you know, I'm going to let it crash and burn. Or if it's going great, then great. I'm just going to keep doing what I what I think I need to do. Like, what is your take on it? Like, have you heard any – like, what has your feedback been so far? Um. Well, only ep- episode one and episode two have gone out so far. Uh-huh. We're um, doing the pub- – the funny for this one at the moment. But – um. I, I definitely take on what people say because the first one, I'm, I'm not sure if you, ha- you have it handy or you've read it recently, but the first one is very kind of uh, moody, slightly atmospheric. Mm-hmm. Like there wasn't really much dialogue in there. It kind of felt very, 
kind of like introducing you to the world. Yeah, and and, and, I, and I did. I do I have like soaking you in. I, and I and I do have the first issue. I don't. I have it in. I have it in digital form. Um, I still have yet to. I, I you know we we talked about it. I, I still have to buy it from the print version from you. But yes, I have looked at it, and it seems like what you have done is basically you're setting up this world. You're setting up this this story. And overall, I think first issues are always hard with new comics and new concepts. Yeah. And especially, you know, when you're when you're doing it by yourself, it's always hard to get that that first issue out there. Yeah, because it's because I've done plenty of scripting, but scripting is very different to actually producing your own comic. Like it is what you think would be great in your head doesn't necessarily translate to to the page and the physical format. I totally agree with that. Well. I totally agree with that. Like I just read. I feel like a lot of comics today are more like developed as fanfare rather than like, hey, I want to do comics. Like, for yep. example, like one thing I've been seeing lately is, uh, you know, people who are fans of something else that is not comics, like, I don't know, say a video game or something like that. They'll say, hey, I'm making a comic that is kind of like inspired by a video game concept. And so the comic doesn't read like a comic, kind of reads like, something in between a comic and a video game. And I think it kind of gets yeah. lost in translation there. You know? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, the, a major, major learning curve for me. It, it sounds stupid and I bring it up all the time, but just being aware of which page is left and which page is right. <laughs> it sounds so stupid, but like, no, it's once not you properly lay it out. You've got to know how those beats go and know Absolutely. that you can hide surprises and, seeing changes in those beats absolutely and you know it's good that you have joel working on this with you because um you know the stuff that we teach him on yis and shin is to look at everything as a spread so when you're looking at pages you want to look at them as two pages together so that they that they flow you know when you're when you're when you're reading an open comic book because despite what everybody says i still believe that print in, in terms of comics, print dominates over digital. I mean, there are people who read digital comics too, but I think that, you know, they they switch between the two. And particularly when yeah. it comes to independent comics, you know, uh, it seems like more people want um, what's in print because let's say you're selling your book or let's say you're doing that Kickstarter, they want that yeah. physical reward. Or let's say you're at a show or a signing or something like that. They want that signed copy from you, the writer. And, yeah. um, you know, when you have that presentation put together, you know, it, it, it all kind of comes together. You know, like you want your, your spreads to, to look nice when they're facing each other. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And um, it's not to downplay uh, Damien Penalba either. He's the guy that does the coloring for it. Yeah, the, the colors on this book are just massive part of riveting. Yeah, and flow and, the eye. And one thing, I, and one thing uh, I'm doing, you know, as people are listening to this, is I got you know images scrolling from the actual interior of the book so that people can appreciate the artwork. And you know, this is just really fantastic. Okay, so let's switch gears now. Let's go back to your Kickstarter. So awesome. I noticed this morning you guys are kind of like nearing that halfway mark on your Kickstarter. You're about like what a week in now two weeks in yeah yeah uh, a week possibly two it started on the first and it's now all the 12th isn't it my calendar behind me 11th yeah so about a week and a half in and how are you feeling so far about it i'm um, pretty good pretty good to be honest with you we, there isn't really that that panic we haven't really missed uh, a daily deadline yet That's so that great. would be like for instance if you have x thousand to raise, you divide that by the amount of days and be like, all right, I've got to hit 100 bucks a day or 150 bucks a day. And we've just consistently been hitting them, which is a great sign. That's fantastic. Now, I don't have much experience on the Kickstarter front. I've done one and that was like three years ago. I'm about to do another one in October and I'm kind of dreading it. Like from my experience doing a Kickstarter before, it was a very nerve wracking experience. You know, like those first couple of days, you see that first surge of people kind of jumping on board and supporting your project. And then you have that, that middle point where things kind of, there's like this lull. 
Um, yeah. And is that something you feel too? Because like you're, you're talking about meeting your goals. Like I, are you anticipating your goals based factoring in that lull or have you kind of like figured out a way to kind of like beat this dreaded lull and, and, and find a way to kind of keep raising money piecemeal throughout the campaign? That- there's there's no way to to beat the lull. To be honest with you, the mm-hmm. the best way <laughs> the best way to do well is d- just for instance. So the first and the second, I made about twelve hundred dollars over those two days. Which is which is phenomenal. Thousand in the past eight. Yeah, that that's phenomenal. I mean, I I made like. I made like fifteen hundred dollars over the span of the three days that I did the first three days that I did mine, and then yeah. for like the next week it was like, I mean it was just it was tough, you know, and I I was dreading it, and I had periods where I had to just like turn off my phone and completely shut myself off from the internet because I was just freaking out so much about this, and I couldn't yeah. shut myself off. Like, are you feeling the same thing? Yeah. Um it's pretty much the same tab is open and it's like refresh, 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 yeah, refresh, 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 refresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I almost become religious. I'm like, please, 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 please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. We've made it another day. <laughs> so so Ryan, what what tell us what are you doing with the money that you're you're raising right now? Like where what's it going towards? What what are you using it for? So most of it will go like out of the five thousand uh, about ten percent goes to what's the word, like financing fees. Mm-hmm. Like I think Kickstarter takes a cut, PayPal takes a cut, and um, they're the kind of small things. But the main focus is the artwork. I think Joel is doing uh, inking and lettering at ninety dollars a page, mm-hmm. which is a pretty damn good deal. Oh, that's a fucking great deal. And Joel, I you know. I like I, I I hired him to be as the letterer, and you know he does a lot of the design work for Yusin Shin, like you know yeah. our logos and you know our our page setups. He basically is our our, our print prep guy, but yeah, um, both my editor and partner David Anthony Kraft and I we we look at his work and we were just blown away by the artwork he is doing for you. He he is extremely talented, and I think for the rate you're getting him, it's it's fantastic you know and yeah you, you, and i know i have no doubt he is 100 percent committed to everything you got going on um and i mean for for uh, and for the eastern chin team i would say he's really like the heart and soul of that team and i could see just how much he's hustling and you know trying to bring this together yeah. this is he's really he takes this seriously mm. it's it's good as well because i Joel, Joel is not only a great artist, but he's also a decent guy. So he is. I want to give him like two, three months of work. Like I don't want him to worry. I kind of want coronary to be a thing where he can you know, have a little bit more job security and, and relax a little bit more and don't have to worry about hustling so much. Sure, sure. I mean, and I, I, I think, I think we all, yeah. I, I think everybody who works in this field has to worry about that constant hustle. You know, like. Yeah. And I think the fact that you're 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 doing your part, and and that's something that I look at too in comics. It's really your initiation when you're doing it yourself that inspires other people and gives them that sense of security. Because if you're not doing your part, then he doesn't have a job. If you're pushing it, then he has something that he can work on and get published that he can add to his portfolio. But we all have to hustle constantly. And, you know, I think it's great that he gets that, you know, he understands that, like, yeah. I got to hustle, you know, and be as involved with this as, as Ryan is. And, you know, it probably makes the journey a little less, uh, uh, lonely, I would think, you know, knowing yeah. that, that your, your guy is right by your side, you know, cause not a lot of people have that kind of relationship with their artists, you know, like artists juggle most multiple projects at a time. And, you know, for the most part, the relationship between a writer and an artist isn't always uh, one where they get to communicate very often. And, you know, when they do, it's always like, that damn writer is keeping me from, you know, being the <laughs> artist I was meant to be, you know, but I know that's not the case with Joel, you know, and uh, he's spoken very, very highly of working with you too. And, um, yeah. you know, 
this this whole story and it and it, and it's you know it it's unique. It it, it kind of reminds me a little bit about uh, of like it's kind of like Mad Men meets the Surrogates a little bit, you know, like given the cover <laughs> designs and you know who who the main character is and you know the 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 style of art that you guys have presented in the series, it seems like you guys are really know what you want to do. And you told me before that you have uh, a planned, um, you know, limit for, this is a limited series. This is not an ongoing thing for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all scripted. Uh, I think it's about uh, 50, 50 something, 55,000 words. Wow, well, fifty-five. Script, you narrowed it down to exactly how many words it is. That's, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> three, five, six, seven, seven. <laughs> this is about three hundred and sixty pages worth, and uh -huh. it's all scripted out as well. That's fantastic. So, so that, so I've got a very kind of long-term perspective of where it's going and where the arcs are, mm -hmm. and then what to foreshadow in earlier issues, mm -hmm. and can, like what to bring out. Can that we? Makes sense. Can we expect to see you at any conventions or any? Are you going to be making any public uh, um, appearances to promote or do anything in in the near future? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. I, w once I build up enough stock mm -hmm. of both the issues, then I'm going to hit the convention scene and start selling and get my name out there. Well, we look forward to seeing you out there, and I look forward to seeing what you guys do in the future of the series. And I, I wish you the best of luck with your with your Kickstarter. You definitely know what you want and what you're doing. And, you know, I think that's great. And it was a pleasure having you on today. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. is Ryan, is there anything else you want us to know? Um, I'm going to make sure that there's a link for your Kickstarter so that people can click on it. Is there anything else you want us to know before we end today's episode? Um. I always kind of end things on a positive takeaway. <laughs> uh, I think if you're ever doing something like this, just find people that are doing the same thing as you, get on their side, and then just never give up. <laughs> Man, I was hoping that, you were going to tell us, like, my British accent is fake. I'm really from, like, you know, <laughs> Ar the, Arkansas. <laughs> I'm really from Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I, I think you got a bright future ahead of you. I, it's been a pleasure talking with you tonight. Best of luck to you. I know you're going to do great with this Kickstarter. And, you know, the Yi Sun Shin team and me, we're behind you guys. And, you know, we know you're going to, you, we know you're going to strike gold with this. Nice. Yeah. All right, man. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you all next week. Until then, onward to victory.